This video will show you how to deliver lecture content to students across multiple devices. It covers how to use Zoom, YouTube, and Blackboard to create and share a voiceover PowerPoint or narrated screencast. You can deliver high quality lectures by combining these three tools, and you have access to all these tools right now at WVU Parkersburg. So let's get started. First, a brief word about the length of your videos. Research clearly shows that most students stop watching after 8 to 10 minutes. However, every video can't be 8 minutes long, especially on complex topics. The answer, then, is to segment your videos by dividing them up into shorter sections or chapters, if you will. That way you can share one longer video, yet students can watch it in stages with built-in breaks. The Table of Contents function in YouTube allows viewers to jump right to points that you designate so they can watch certain sections over and over if they choose or need to. Next, a brief word about file size. Videos are large files that take up a lot of space, and we do not want to upload them into Blackboard because it would really slow Blackboard down since Blackboard isn't made to store large videos. However, YouTube is made exactly for that purpose. So we want to upload the video into YouTube to create a link and then share that link in Blackboard with our students. The question is then, how do we get a video into YouTube? The answer is by using the screen capture function in Zoom. However, before we get back to Zoom, you need to be ready to go. And I mean ready to go. If you plan to click through and record a website for your students, then you need to have that website up and waiting at your starting point. If you're going to do a voiceover PowerPoint, then you need to actually have that PowerPoint up and running in slideshow mode, ready to go, before you click the record button. It's also important to rehearse out loud a few times beforehand and to not make your first video too long. Pick a shorter topic and work your way through the process, and then you can start focusing on larger projects. Okay, now back to Zoom. Go to zoom.us. Once you're there, click Sign In in the upper right corner. Click Sign In with Google and provide your college email address. Then click Next. Then provide your college password and click Next again. This will sign you directly into Zoom. You may be asked to create an account if this is your first time using Zoom. Do so. Now you're inside your Zoom account. Once again, make sure your PowerPoint or website is ready to go. Then hover your mouse over the Host a Meeting option in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Click on the Screen Share Only option to create a voiceover PowerPoint or screencast. A window opens where you can select another application or window to share. I identify my running PowerPoint slideshow, select it, and then click Share. My PowerPoint slideshow opens with the screen share options available at the top of the screen, and I'm going to click More on the menu and then select Record. Zoom will confirm that you want to make an audio recording and ask you to join the audio. Do so. It is recommended to join through computer audio. However, after you do so, you need to be ready to deliver your lecture immediately because recording will begin within five seconds of clicking that button. So be ready to deliver your lecture within those five seconds. Once you start, you can click on the PowerPoint itself, and then you can use your mouse to click again and advance the slides. You can also use the spacebar to advance slides forward, and you can use the forward and back arrows to move back and forth between the presentation slides. Once you're finished delivering your presentation, you can activate the share menu by putting your mouse over the green bar at the top of the screen and then once again clicking more and now stop recording.
Now that you stop recording, you're ready to save this lecture to your computer. It's a good idea to know where you're going to save it in advance because you will need to find it later to upload it into YouTube. Click Stop Share and the meeting will convert. Afterwards, it will ask you to browse for the folder where you want to save the lecture. I already know that I want to save the lecture in the folder called Lecture Capture Sample on the desktop, so I'll make that selection and click OK. A folder opens showing us the three files that have been saved, and we want the MP4 file. That's the one that we're going to upload to YouTube. So we can hover over the name of the file, it's always the last one in line, and we can make sure that it's the one that we want. Well, that was the hard part. Now let's upload this lecture into YouTube. You might not realize that you already have a free YouTube account through WVU Parkersburg. Plus, it's super easy to access. Just go to mail.google.com and open up your college email account. Click on the Google Apps icon in the upper right corner of your screen, scroll down a little, and then click on YouTube. You are now logged into your college YouTube account. To upload your video, click your profile picture or icon in the upper right corner of the screen, then select YouTube Studio. Next, click the Upload Video icon inside YouTube Studio. Click Select File, navigate to the folder where you saved your lecture capture, select your MP4 file, and click Open. Here, you can rename the video. Then click Next, but as you can see, you cannot upload a video without answering this question to comply with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Answer the question, then click Next, then click Next again to select your display options. Make your display choice based on your needs. Public means that everyone can see your video and that it is searchable on YouTube. That also means that you can use the YouTube tool inside Blackboard to post your video for students. Unlisted means that someone has to have the link in order to be able to see the video. You can still use Blackboard with this unlisted option. However, you cannot use YouTube's tool inside Blackboard because you cannot find an unlisted video in YouTube. You have to have a direct link to the video. The third option is private. If you have a series of people in mind that you would like to share the video with specifically, you could email them the link directly. Click Save, and then you can see that your video is published, and you can copy the link and then click Close. Now it's time to place that link into Blackboard. The first thing we want to do is to find the place where we want to put our link. I'm going to put it in Module 1, and I'm going to select Build Content and a web link instead of a YouTube video, because remember, my video is unlisted, so I need to use a web link. I'm going to name it, and I'm going to use Control plus V to paste the link that I got from YouTube. I can provide a description if I need to, or attach documents. When I'm ready, I hit Submit. As you can see, the link is now available, and my students can see my lecture on YouTube. We hope that you found this video interesting and informative as you plan your courses for next semester. As always, please reach out for any questions or concerns.